Okay. What's up? Uh, Mr. Sanchez here and Mr. Dumas. Open this, please. Woo! <laughs> and uh, we got this really awesome uh, spreadsheet that, believe it or not, took forever and a day to make. In fact, this is like our fifth time doing this screencast. But it's all good because it's going to be perfect now. Um, there's a lot of information on this thing. And we're going to use this to introduce our next unit on the Constitutional Convention. Uh, I know that that doesn't mean anything to you right now, but it will in a second. So let's talk about what this uh, spreadsheet is, uh, show you how it's organized, and then we'll go over some of these results and relate it to uh, what our content is. Um, so this spreadsheet is a sample of results from uh, voting that we had done on what should be the eighth grade dance. We did this last year, um, and we've kind of messed with the numbers to make it make sense, but imagine if you would. Uh, and it's organized as such. If you look all the way to the left, you have 13 different teachers. Okay, all right here. And all of their classes voted. And, and in the column right next to it where it says total students, that's how many students are in each one of these classes. So Ms. Pletzer has 8, Mr. Dumont has 22, Mr. Connolly 21, so on and so forth. Okay? And you can see the big classes, the small classes, medium classes. And there were five different themes that all these classes voted on. Masquerade, Journey Through Time, Starry Night, Under the Sea, and Black and White. And if you look down, you can see how many votes each class gave for each one of these categories. So for instance, Masquerade got three votes from Ms. Pletzer's class, Mr. Dumont's class, we had five students vote for it, Mr. Connolly, four, Coach Carter, 20, so on and so forth. Now, I want you to pause for a second if you need to, uh, and make sure that you understand that. Um, there is one last thing, actually, I want you to understand before you... you pause or anything. These two columns over here. Um, we have our two columns all the way to the right. This column right here shows you how many students are planning on not attending the dance. So of Miss Pletzer's eight students, three of them are not planning on going to this dance. This last column over here shows you the amount of students who are planning on going. So five students from her class are planning on going. Okay, so now if you don't get that, pause for a second, go back, rewind, rewind, rewind. <laughs> Look at it over again. Make sure you understand how this works because we're going to be talking about some of these results and some of the details of this information. And if you don't understand how this is organized, you're going to be lost. So do that if you need to. All right. You either did it or you didn't, but we're moving forward. Okay, we're going to talk about the results right now. And uh, there are two ways to look at these results. Uh, the first way is total student votes, and you can see that down here in this green row. Um, the second way is total class votes, and there's a difference between these. Um, you can see the numbers are drastically different. The total student votes, this green column, or this green row, shows you how many total students voted on this um, particular category. Uh, the total class votes shows you the total number. If every class got the same vote, you know how many classes voted for that. Pause if you don't understand that. All right. Um, so the first thing that I want us to do is make sure that we understand who wins, or excuse me, what theme wins, um, given us following this green rose uh, rules or following these this purple rose rules. Um, on your paper, you're going to answer these couple questions right here. Uh, first question, what theme would win if we decided based on the total student votes. So if we use this green this green row right here, which theme would win? And the second question naturally is, what theme would win if we use this total class votes to decide what theme would be? The third question is, I want you to ask, and talk about this with your shoulder partner, which do you think is most fair and why? Okay, remember we're looking for complete sentences here, so make sure that you do that in complete sentences. Uh, go ahead and pause and do that. And then when you come back uh, and you have your answers written down, we'll discuss this. All right, so clearly it looks like the total student votes, if we're going to count every single student's vote and decide the winner that way, it looks like the masquerade theme is going to win. But if we choose to go with the route where we look at how different classes voted, 
then it kind of looks like black and white should win there because you see four different classes chose that the black and white dance was the best option. And there, the masquerade only gets one vote total. So, I mean, to me, it's pretty obvious, Sanchez. Like, I'm pretty sure that we need to go with the total class votes because four different classes chose black and white. So we have to go with that, right? we got to respect their decision. Uh, no, we don't, actually. I think that that's a terrible idea. What? Um, well, if you look, you got four class votes, but there's only 29 total students that actually voted for that. That's like, I don't know, like a fourth of what actually what voted for uh, Masquerade. I mean, total student votes is definitely the more fair way. Yeah, I mean, I guess so, but, like, out of that 86 people that voted for Masquerade, 20 of them came from Coach Carter's class. Like, we're just going to let Coach Carter's class have all the power in deciding what the dance is going to be? I mean, we got some really small classes here that won black and white. They said Miss Perez's class, Miss Valaine's, that's the ambassadors out there in the library, Miss Naparetta's class, Miss Sierra's, they all said, four classes, they are going to have the black and white. And, you know, just because they're small, I don't think we should disrespect their opinion. I totally understand that. I mean, I can see where Coach Carter really kind of has a lot of power in this and that he has, you know, so many students. Um, but it's not really fair either to let, you know, those 20 students suffer because, you know, you have a couple of small classes where, you know, two votes, you know, in some of these classes you know, two votes in Miss Sierra's class, two votes in Ms. Villain's class, two votes in Ms. Perez's. I mean, that's that's nothing. That's not even a, a, a significant portion of what voted in that one particular class in Coach Carter. So, I mean, I get what you're saying, but I also think that it, it kind of goes the same way. You know, you can't let small classes dictate what the dance is going to be. All right. Well, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree on that one. All right. So, Sanch, one other thing that I noticed was we got up here – we're looking at students that are not attending the dance and students that are attending the dance. Now, I mean, this is just me, but it seems like there's a big difference there. You know, maybe they should have more than the other. So, kids, I want you to go ahead and pause this video for a second and talk with your partner. Does it matter if students are attending or not attending the dance? Should they vote if they're not attending? Should that vote count? Or should it just be the students that are attending that get their votes to count? Because it seems like there's quite a difference there. So pause, discuss with your partner, and answer that question. All right, so now that you guys have paused, discuss that a little bit. Sanch and I have some different opinions. Now, I know that I do not think it is fair at all that students that aren't attending the dance are going to vote. I mean, why would they even care? They're probably going to vote for a really bad option just because, you know, they aren't going to the dance. You think they're just going to sabotage it? They're going to sabotage the dance. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, let's make them go under the sea. Everybody's going to drown. I definitely have some students who would probably sabotage the voting. System. Absolutely. No, that's not true. I have all great students. Um, I see your point, right? I mean, especially when I look over here, at again, Coach Carter seems to be taking up some of the discussion here, but he's got 22 students in this that are not even going to the dance. Um, that definitely, I mean, what if all 22 of those students are like the 20 that voted for Masquerade and two that voted for Under the Sea, like 20, basically take away 20 votes right there if we aren't going to count those those guys. Um, you know, I, I totally understand it. You know, should we count people that aren't planning on going? Um, it's hard to make an argument that, that you should, but... Uh, I don't, yeah, so that's, I don't have anything else. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I can't, can't back that up. I cannot allow the kids that are not voting or that aren't even going to the dance to vote. That just seems crazy to me. Okay, so there's one last thing that uh, we want to take a look at, uh, and that's this thing on population. If you take a look at the teachers that are in blue font over here, so I'm talking about Ms. Perez, Ms. Valaine, Ms. Naparata, Ms. Sierra, and Ms. Pletzer. Um, you'll notice that these are the teachers that have 10 or less students. You see, Ms. Pletzer has 8, Ms. Sierra has 5, Ms. Naparata has 10, Ms. Valaine has 2, and Ms. Perez only has 3. Um, and we kind of touched on this before, um, but I want you guys to think about uh, which system would these teachers who have 10 or less students prefer most? Would they most prefer a system that counts the total student votes, or would they more prefer uh, a system that counts oops, the total class votes? Um, 
there's a system for sure in which they are more powerful. And I want you guys to think about which one that is. And in a complete sentence, go ahead and write down which system you think that they would prefer and why. Pause. Okay, now that you're back, take a look at these red teachers. We got Coach Carter, Mr. Lindeen, Ms. Wofford, Mr. Barch. They all have a crazy amount of kids in their class, 40, 30, 50. So what system would benefit those classes the most? If we have a whole lot of students in our class, then do we want to go with what won the class or the total students all across the board? Go ahead and answer that question in one more complete sentence. And pause. All right, so clearly, if you're a small class, you're going to want the total class vote. You're going to want the total, your class to have as much power as any other class, no matter how many people are in it. And if you have a huge class, like Mr. Carter's, you're going to want the total number of your students to count. That whole number is going to contribute to your side, and you're probably going to get what you want. Okay, now... Obviously, you guys know us well enough. This whole thing is definitely a metaphor. This is all showing you something. So if you look on the left there, you probably already noticed in yellow, you see that every teacher is representing a different state. So if we're talking about Coach Carter, he's representing Virginia. Is Virginia at this point in time in the you know, late 1700s, is that a big state or a small state in terms of its population? If you're looking at Mrs. Perez, from my home state of New Hampshire, is that going to be a big state or a small state? It's a very small state back then, and so their population wasn't going to do that well. They weren't going to get much accomplished if they had their few people, their three students in that class, voting for things. The three is not going to match up with Carter's 54. Now, on the other hand, Carter in that big state is going to want to get the power over a small state like Perez. Why is he going to give equal power to a tiny state with three students or three population when there's a giant state of 54 that he's representing? And there's a reason that we put all of this together, right? Like he was saying, you know, it's a metaphor for what we're about to teach. We're talking about the Constitutional Convention um, in this unit where our first 13 states came together and had to make a decision as to who should get what kind of power. How should we decide um, anything? How should we make decisions and who should carry the most weight when making those decisions? Um, and that's what this all is, is about. You know, we're going to talk about this unit and how Big states, medium-sized states, and small states had to divvy up the power and make it fair for everybody. Um, we're going to talk about how some of those states had slaves that didn't participate in anything, kind of like in this situation where there are not many students you know, participating in, in the dance in some cases. Um, and how should we count those people? Should we count slaves when we're counting up people and deciding how much power that state with those slaves should have? Or should we just say, you know, those guys aren't participating and therefore we shouldn't count them? And these are all questions that we have to, that we had to address during this constitutional convention. You guys are going to see in this unit just exactly how we made compromises with one another to actually come to uh, a decision and create what we have uh, as our form of government, the Constitution of the United States of America. And those decisions that they made a couple hundred years ago still are giving us the government that we have now. Everything that we have in our government now came from the decisions that these guys made at the Constitutional Convention. And yes, I say guys because they did not welcome women to this meeting. We welcome women now. All right, cool. So uh, thanks for uh, tuning in, listening to this. Um, hopefully you guys got everything done. Um, you should have, what, we, what do we have, five or six questions. Uh, make sure that they're incomplete sentences. We'll be checking them in your folder, uh, and then we'll discuss this and move on to the next module.